Hello there guys and welcome to another episode of Man Discovers. You've reached the channel where honesty is truly the best policy. In today's video we are going to discuss a set of speakers that I've been looking to review for a while now and that is the KEF LS50 Metas which I have right here. And these speakers I wanted to review because back in October or November 2020 I reviewed the outgoing LS50 Originals which I wanted to hear for a very long time and never really got the opportunity to do properly until I started this channel. I wasn't very happy with the LS LS50 Originals and that was for a variety of reasons. Have a look back at that video. It was in October, November 2020. It was one of my first videos and you'll see why I did not like them. Overview. As if you don't already know what you're about to see. Now, the LS50 Metas, they have a very special technology and that is the Meta material or meta material that KEF have produced. And I would say that it's a very, it's very unique. It's I think like the world's first meta material in a speaker, I think. And I like how KEF do try to push the industry forward. I think that it's very innovative. I do think KEF is a very innovative loudspeaker company. Now this material, it's like a puck. It's like a Imagine like something like this sort of size and it's at the back of the driver and in every driver when the driver pushes forward and then comes back there is a back wave as well as the wave that's directly radiating towards your ears. Now this back wave in a set of normal speakers we don't really want to hear this back wave because that's kind of like a mirror image almost of the of the wave that we're hearing. And what we get is a standing wave buildup which can smear the audio, which is why in higher end loudspeakers inside the cabinet, we have a lot of material that is designed to take away the energy of that back wave so it doesn't turn into sound energy that could distort our audio. Kef have taken a different approach with this meta design and what it does is with a much smaller uh, object, let's say, inside the cabinet, they're able to eliminate more of that back wave with meta material. And if you look at how it's designed, it's very, very uh, intuitive. It does, uh, when you look at it, it's like, wow, that's amazing. Especially considering the size. And I imagine the cost, this must be reducing the cost somehow in the long run for Kef as this material that you traditionally stuff into speakers, it's not cheap. So is the meta material going to be as revolutionary as Kef say it's going to be? We're going to find that out in this video. But first, just a quick snapshot into my unboxing. Unboxing. The most pointless part of this video. So today we're going to be unboxing the KEF LS50 Meta and I've just discovered these were sent to me in a very special colour. Let's get started. Here they are, if you can see that. This is the Royal Blue, I believe, Royal Blue colour. Here's the back. We have just two binding posts at the back. Yeah, otherwise it's basically Kef LS50, just more in a matte finish. Now this here is the royal blue color and I'm getting hints here. Don't know if anybody in the audience agrees, but I'm getting hints of Rolex watches. If anybody knows the Rolex Submariner, in the bimetal with the blue face it reminds me very much of this and uh yeah that watch you know if i were to ever buy a really nice watch that would be probably one of the ones or the only one 
I would consider. Otherwise, I don't really care. So, yeah, I really like the color. We also get in the package just a standard pouch, instructions, which is about that thick, it's not very thick at all. And we have the port plugs as well that are included. And this is what the port plugs are like, just like a kind of little Swiss roll with the middle that you can take out. I guess if you want to partially port it, or sorry, partially block the port. You see, so yeah, that's that for the unboxing. Design, so your wife doesn't leave you for another man or woman. Now that's out of the way, the first thing I want to say about the KEF LS50, it still has that iconic design that the original LS50 basically brought to us in, I think it was 2010, 2011 sort of time. And yeah, I mean, a lot of people like this design. It's quite compact. It has a nice curved baffle at the front, which has acoustic benefits, by the way. And I think that this is an, a decent upgrade visually to the original. It doesn't look that much different, so you know what it is. It's good for Kef's branding. It's immediately identifiable as an LS50 speaker. But the thing that I think that is actually better now is that it has changed to a matte style surface, which I believe is gonna be easier to keep clean and you know fingerprints off of it and stuff. When I looked at the original LS50s, I did think that was a bit of a problem. It was like a, like a gloss black finish. And I didn't really like it. In photos, I th think it was good. But in the home, I think there, it, it, there was basically a bit to be desired. So yeah, I do think there is an upgrade there. The royal blue color that I have, I think is a really nice color. I think it adds a splash of color into the room. A lot of speakers, you know, companies wouldn't dare to put, you know, blue and like a gold together. I really like the color. So yeah, and there's some other colors in Kef's range as well, in the LS50 range, which I also like. I like how Kef are giving you some options to be a bit more creative with your setup. So that's good. Sound quality, because you're such an audiophile. More like audio fool. <laughs> now let's move straight on to sound quality because we have been promised and I saw some of the early reviews of the LS50 Metas and we've been promised a significant upgrade to the original LS50. Now I've always been a little bit skeptical of that because at the end of the day the price point should really dictate the level of audio quality that you should get. The previous LS50 was at about £800 Currently, the new Meta is a thousand pounds, so it's increased in value about 25% in the last decade. Take into account there has been inflation. Costs are probably higher today than they were back then. So you would expect that performance wise, we might be listening to a very similar speaker. There have been technological improvements in this speaker though. So let's see how good it's really gonna be. Now, I have been listening to this speaker all day and I have given it a fair test in my opinion because I've used two amps. The first amp I used was my Arcam SA20, which is a Class G style amp, which has a blend basically of Class A and Class AB amplification. A Class A is like regarded as the audiophile class amplifier. And I think the Arcam SA20 is a decent amplifier for the price range. It has a more kind of honest character, a laid back character in a way, and it has a kind of natural quality to it. I also tested it, the LS50s, with my Hypex, which is still on by the way, my Hypex Encore Class D amplifier, which is a very, very, very good amplifier, and they're using these modules now in a lot of active speakers because they are more efficient in terms of heat uh, efficiency, energy efficiency, they spit out less heat as well. 
you're also able to get more watts into a smaller space. And I think that's why a lot of these firms are putting the Class D amplifiers into their active models. Now I've done some research and I believe it's either the Hypex Encores or the Ice Power modules that are going into a lot of active designs these days. They are typically very neutral and they have a very clean sound. So there you are, two different amplifiers. They're basically on different realms when it comes to acoustics. So I thought to give the LS50 Meta a fair test, I would use both of these. Now for the DAC, I used my topping E30 DAC, which is regarded as a very clean, transparent DAC. I don't want the DAC adding anything to the sound. So that's for me is the best I could possibly do given my situation. So let's get on to the LS50. How did it sound? Now, the way I like to do reviews is I like to remember very accurately what I did here in the moment. So when I was listening to the LS50 Metas, I was making notes and I've got these notes in front of me right now, which I'm going to read to you. Literally as I'm listening, I'm typing it and listening, typing it and listening. Right, so here we go. This is what I wrote about the LS50 Metas. I wrote, maybe it has more focus than my current monitor audio studios that you might see down there. The instruments sound more like they're in the foreground rather than kind of in the background. I think that the LS50 Metas have worse bass extension compared to the monitor audio studios. So how deep can the speakers go? So I think, yes, worse in that area. In terms of the bass, how was the bass overall presented? I put here, it sounds a bit flabbier than the mon monitor audio studios. Basically, in some regions, I feel like, I felt like the bass just kind of had a bit of excess to it that I don't think is meant to be there. I also put here worse soundstage than the monitor audio studios. I also put less cohesive than the monitor audio studios. The monitor audios, they seem to disappear a lot better. Like you're sitting a meter or two meters away from these speakers and with the monitor audios, you could, you could swear that there's no speaker there. And I believe that's down to its MTM design. I think that has some advantages in that area for various reasons. Whereas the KEFs, they're more kind of directional, if, you get, if you're understanding what I mean. And because of that, you feel, you always know that they're, they're there directly in front of you. So that's another thing. I also put here, they seem to be more sibilant than monitor audios. So like with a hi-hat, for example, that I tended, I could hear that more, that tended to reveal itself a bit more. And by the way, I'm writing this right now, listening to the RCAM, by the way, it's running through the RCAM at this point. Another thing I wrote was, it dissects the audio more so than the monitor audio studio. So it's pulling apart the bits of the track. You can hear, you know, more elements of the track, I would say, but, the way it's been deconstructed or the way it's put back together. So you can hear it slightly being dissected, but the way it's put back together and given to you as a package, it's, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound cohesive. Whereas the monitor audio, you get very similar levels of detail, but it sounds like it's all meant to be there. That's the best way I can put that. One of the tracks I referenced here, Quincy Jones, The Midnight Sun Will Never Set. I was listening to this track at the time. I wrote, the saxophone is very present with the LS50. The Monitor Audio Studio makes you more aware that there is a band accompanying the sax. Whereas the LS50 Meta, it puts the sax right to the foreground and you can't hear the band as much. So you, you have this feeling that you're not in the room as much as the monitor audios. With the monitor audios, like I said, they have this way of doing a disappearing act and you could swear that sometimes there is some, there's like a band in front of you or something like that. It has a bit more of that to it. Another track I put here, Jack of Speed by Steely Dan. 
there isn't as much cohesion as I'm used to is what I've written there. I use, I play this track a lot of the time, so I'm very used to it. Again, in the same track, I say here, I am less aware of the bass guitar in this track when I'm listening to the LS50 Metas. With the monitor audios, the bass is more profound and it's crispier, it's more articulate, is what I've written here. Right, so there we go. At this point, I switched to the Hypex Class D amplifier. So here we go, my notes have changed now. Now I say the bass has livened up. Okay, so what I mean by that was, going from memory, that there was energy in the bass. It was more articulate, it was bigger in both regards. So that's that. Clarity and presence in the voice has now improved, I've written here. Soundstage has also improved. However, there is now a brashness to the sound. The hi-hat in Jack of Speed has become more similar, uh, sibilant. So the same track I listened to earlier on, Jack of Speed, the hi-hat has become even more sibilant. The bass in Jack of Speed has become more present. It's definitely bigger now and more proportionate to the rest of the audio. Another thing I've written, overall the speakers have gained clarity and power but at the expense of musicality. The feeling of cohesion seems even worse than with the Arcam. The speakers are dissecting the track more. I feel like I'm trying too hard to like them, is what I've also written. They remind me more of the old LS50s, which I did not like. They seem like the LS50 originals, but with a more behaved bass. They're more behaved in uh, uh, bass all the way up to the lower mid range. Yes, I remember that th this is, uh, yes, I would agree with myself, yeah. In, right, another track here. In Ride Across the River by Dire Straits. The monitor audios are just way better. That's what I've written there. Mark Knopfler's voice has an expansive, dreamlike quality uh, with the monitor audios. The bass is bigger, yet it's more behaved, more consistent across the entire bass spectrum as well. And the guitar solo in this track, at 2 minutes and 30 seconds, the monitor audio sounds sweet and articulate, whereas the kef sounds overpresent and it sounds a bit edgy by comparison. And I've put here, sorry kef, I just don't like these speakers, sad face. So that's the end of my notes. And that was when I was listening here with my computer. This was all done in the moment. So there's no chance I could have skewed this with my memory. This was done instantaneously. So I trust these these notes. Some of, some of these things I forgot until I'm reading it now. So yes, overall, what do I think about the speakers? Well, you can tell that I prefer the Monitor Audio Studios. Now, some of, the, some of you are thinking, you know, oh, these Kef LS50s, Metas, they are no good. Well, firstly, it depends on your room. I have tested these Metas in this room and downstairs in my living room. In my living room, I wasn't a fan. It's just as simple as that. I think in actually, in a way, they got worse because I feel like the acoustic conditions down there isn't really ideal. It's probably similar to a lot of your living rooms. I feel like it sounded better up here. So yeah, I would say that the Monitor Audio Studios are a very good set of speakers. Put it this way, the studios, right, Monitor Audio took out the two mid-range drivers and the ribbon tweeter. They took them out of their Platinum 2 range, right, their, their flagship speaker, which I'll put on the screen for you now. They took that directly out and put it in its own enclosure. And I believe that set of speakers costs something like 10 grand or something like that. These are from the, really from the platinum range from Monitor Audio. Now, for some reason, they were selling these speakers for a thousand pounds at the same price as the Metas. In that price range, they are both competitive. For my ears, I feel that the Monitor Audios were more suitable. The reason that I like them better I think it has something to do with the MTM design that I mentioned earlier, which has some acoustic benefits. If you look it up, you will see. And also the ribbon tweeter that was taken from the platinum range, it's like butter to your ears, you know? It's like, 
think about a silk dome tweeter they're not very they're not very articulate i'm not saying for every silk dome tweeter because atc is one brand that have silk domes very good but in general i'm saying they tend to have less of the frequency response and command over the trebles as something like a metal dome okay and that's a widely known concept i believe the ribbon gives you best of both the ribbon with this it's like a less edgy sound but you still hear a lot of detail and that's why i think maybe that the monitor audios are just very special you don't get speakers very often that are designed in this way and it confounds me why monitor audio discontinued the range last year it really upsets me i can't understand why back to the ls50 metas the LS50 Metas, they have a UniQ design, which is basically a coaxial driver, which means that we have the treble unit and the mid-range, two units in the same position. Now, Kef also put a tangerine waveguide on the tweeter, and they say that what it does is it provides an amazing off-axis response. Now, from my reading, and my experience in this field, I have found that speakers that are designed in this way to have a very good off-axis response with the trebles, what they can do is the treble, right? The trebles don't die off as much when you're to the sides. That means that the reflections that you're getting are also going to be louder, whereas a more you know a treble unit or let's say a set of speakers that are more focused and narrow they suffer less from the problems that you get within the room because there's less reflected energy coming from the walls and arriving at your ears if you understand what i mean so i found over the years that sometimes when something is more directional it's better it sounds better when you're in the sweet spot whereas something like the kefs because I've seen this with the previous KEFs, the R3s as well, with the, with the LS50 originals, the R3s and these ones, they have this kind of unforgiving nature about them that I'm not, my ears don't like. Some people will like them and it might suit your room, but I think that more people, if you, if you gathered four or five people into one space, maybe they would prefer the Metas. But if you have a listening room where you have one seating position and it's set up in the sweet spot, then perhaps you will prefer something more directional in nature. That's just my guess. It's not something that I can prove, but it's something that I'm guessing based on the knowledge that I have uh, built up over time and the speakers that I've listened to. So yes, I believe the Metas are gonna be good speakers for you but it really will dependent on, uh, be dependent on your room. I think the Monitor Audio studio, Studios are more forgiving. They, they're just as detailed. They're more cohesive. I believe the bass is better. It's tighter. It's more aggressive. The bass is more aggressive. So I'm sticking with the Monitor Audio Studios. These LS50s, they weren't sent to me for free. I did buy them. So there was an option there for me to keep them. I'm not going to be keeping them. So... Yeah, that's all I have to say. If you want to buy them, good luck to you. Make sure you demo some other speakers along with the LS50s. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Now you subscribe or I smash you.